Um, I was listening to David with great interest because I was waiting for the point where we start disagreeing. Um, it did come, but only well into, the, into his presentation. So where do we agree? We agree that the schooling system is in trouble and that some kind of action is needed. Uh, I agree that some kind of school level support system is appealing. Um, I agree that this is an important intervention, if only because it definitely represents a whole policy shift. Uh, the fact that it's been included in the draft bill uh, supports that. Um, I agree about the risks. I think, though, they were understated. We live in a time when um, public-private part partnerships are becoming fashionable again in spite of the, all, the, all the evidence indicating that they have uh, not been particularly successful in fulfilling their own promises. Um, and I think in that environment where the World Bank is pushing for public-private partnerships, but profit-based ones, I, I agree that this is not at this point um, represented as a profit-based system, but in, in an environment where everybody from Trump to Theresa May and so forth are pushing for profit-based public-private partnerships, I think uh, that risk is great. The World Bank has indicated that something like 350 different countries are already moving in that direction. So um, how this is not going to slip into that model um, remains to be seen. But where do I begin to disagree? Um, Yusuf has already helped me by um, speaking at some length about how the boundary between public and private is very slippery and that it's not easy to, 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 to uh, categorize particular provisions as one or the other. What I would like to suggest is that what we need to do then is to look at the detail of a particular model and ask ourselves in what ways is this model public-like in its logic, in its practices, in what ways is it private-like, but more importantly, what does this mean uh, for both the learners in those schools, the schools themselves, and for the rest of the system? And so I'd like to ask four questions about this particular model. It's a school improvement model. There are different approaches to changing education in the literature. One of them is called school improvement. This one could broadly fall under that heading. And uh, it's, it's in general terms, a school improvement model is one that, uh, as it's represented in the literature, one that I have great uh, sympathy for. So um, what then are the, four, are the four questions? First of all, when we want to assess a particular model, and I'm basing this very much um, on, on literature and education. And everything I say about the model is based, by the way, on either presentations relating to the model that I've attended or documentation relating to the model that I've read. Um, yeah, those two sources. And, and some information about early implementation. So the four questions that I think we need to consider. The first is, uh, what is the relationship between the school and all other levels of um, provision, that is the circuit, the district, the province, and so forth. The second is, how does accountability work? We use this word accountability so loosely as if it means only one thing, and in fact there are very different modes of accountability. Accountability can work in very different ways. The third is, what is the, how does this uh, model um, position the relationship between schools and communities? Uh, including particularly, of course, parents. And the last is, what is the theory of change in the model? In other words, what are the principles and guidelines regarding how change will be affected in the daily activities of teachers, school leaders, uh, circuit uh, officials, district officials, um, and so on. So if we look at the, the model in relation to these four, and we ask ourselves, uh, not only is this private or public-like in the way this, this, the answer to the question is, the way the model answers these questions, but is it beneficial or not? Is it 
positive in terms of achieving its goals and in, in its effect on the schooling system. Firstly, with regard then to the relationship between the school and the rest of the schooling system. Research suggests that a good, that is productive and sustainable school improvement strategy should improve practices not only in the school itself, but also improve practices in the relation between the school and the system. And every time I say system, I'm meaning circuit, district, province, and for that matter, national. Now, one important consideration here is that by no means all the factors that contribute to either good or bad performance are located at the level of the school. And so logically, these cannot all be addressed at the level of the school. Uh, the teaching and learning at, in the school is affected by, for example, the availability of resources, obviously, and that's affected by the, our, our fee structure, which, by the way, I think renders at least half our so-called public system semi-private. The quality of teacher education, what the policies are, the introduction of new curricula such as CAPS and the dom demands of that, the nature of teacher development, uh, policy overload and so forth. So um, all of these issues do not sit primarily necessarily and, and only at the level of the school and cannot be addressed only at the level of the school. And of course, as other speakers have said, some schools are much better positioned than others to deal with these issues for, for reasons that a number of speakers have gone into. Now, our research in South Africa, and I like quoting the ministerial report of 2007 just because it's very accessible and, and summarizes a lot of other work, has shown that it's relatively, no, not easy, but it's, it's not uncommon for schools to initiate improvement uh, from within the school. So schools that do well in challenging circumstances can initiate change. They can do better. The problem is sustaining it. And this report and others have shown that sustaining improved practice depends very much on the relationship between the school and the system. And I've told you what I mean by system. And the degree of support and alignment that is in that relationship. Um, so we don't need to just fix schools, we need to fix the schooling system at multiple interrelated levels. Um, so if this relationship between the school and the system is important, what does this model say about that relationship? What kind of relationship does it suggest? First of all, um, it does propose support at the level of the school, obviously, that's its whole rationale. But this support is by no means integrated into the relationship between the school and the rest of the system. Instead, the model disconnects school improvement processes from pervasive interrelated systemic problems from the national to the um, circuit level. Uh, secondly, this also disconnection does affect the way posts are allocated so that all new posts will be SGB posts, so the that, that actual term is used, and these are effectively private appointments. There's also intended, the bill tells us, to be a separate evaluation authority which displaces the current systemic whole schools evaluation framework, um, which works through the districts. So again, there's a disconnect between the schools and the rest of the system. And so all the communication, which normally, ideally, should be happening between the schools and the system, which, when things go well, and I've already agreed that they often do not, uh, enable some kind of alignment and collaboration uh, between the school and the rest of the system with regard to change. So my first argument is that there's a problem in the way that relationship is restructured and that this puts schools in a, sets them up for failure in the long run, along with their um, partner organisations. Second, and I am getting to the end, Taryn, where's Taryn gone? She's trusting me, she's gone away, good. Uh, good, I can talk slowly. Uh, then, I, <laughs> then on accountability, different modes of accountability. There are two main modes of accountability identified. The one is a system where there's downward pressure and upward reporting. So the department, in this case the provincial department, 
puts pressure downward saying we expect you to improve your pass rates or whatever the case may be and there's upwards reporting. The other mode of accountability uh, and, and that means that all the accountability finally sits at the lowest possible level because everybody's putting pressure downwards from the province to the district to the circuit. In fact, they're being skipped at this point to the school and from the school to the teachers. And, and, and the teachers are sitting there saying, okay, fine, but you know, who's gonna do this with me? How do I do it? Uh, and so on. So the accountability is downwards to the school level. And in the model, of course, there's support, but only at that level. The alternative is that there's accountability distributed up and down all the levels, and that there's a collaboration and an alignment of, of improvement strategies, so that the schools work with the circuits, with the districts, and so on. And even in terms of, for example, curriculum. If we have curricula which are making it difficult, and we do, I would argue, have a curriculum that is making it difficult for schools to do well. We need some sort of process whereby that can be communicated back upwards and that can be addressed instead of a situation where um, teachers are simply punished and schools with their partners are simply punished for something that actually should be addressed in other ways. So what does the model suggest? It suggests a downward type of um, accountability system and upward reporting by means of, and I quote, ongoing database performance management, um, and specifically uh, through the tests. And this kind of accountability that goes down, which is, 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 uh, puts pressure on the school regardless of where the problems they are facing actually arise. Now, it's also very well established in the literature that this kind of mode of accountability um, puts pressure on schools to produce the right numbers but not necessarily make changes in how things are actually being done. So to give an example, if you have learners who you think are going to fail, you try to take them off your roll in some way. For example, at grade 12 level, you can have them register as private candidates. That way you get your numbers up, you look as if you're doing better, um, you pr you're reporting the numbers back that are required of you, but you're not making the actual changes, which are too difficult to make if, it's, if they're not made within a more coherent system. That's generally referred to as a compliance approach um, that, that, that results. The third question was about the school in the community. I'll say very little about that. Other than that, as was already mentioned, we already find teach, uh, parents being uh, their role being reduced in, 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 in that they're either not on the governing body or they're a minority on the governing body instead of a majority. The literature shows that you do need to have communities on board if you're going to turn schools around. And I don't really see how we're going to effectively have communities on board. I don't see any mechanism for keeping them on board. Um, the, the models um, suggest that Schools are accountable to parents, but I don't see the mechanism, mechanism for that either. Finally, the, the fourth question was about a theory of change or strategies for school support and improvement. Now, everything I've heard and seen, both in terms of presentations, in terms of documents, and most importantly in this case, in terms of early cases of implementation, shows that this model is really very thin on a theory of change in terms of how things actually change within schools, as opposed to simply putting an organization there, and I won't comment on the actual organizations, but let me say that that are already in place, but I don't think they are necessarily well placed to uh, generate their own theory of change. So this model is extremely thin in, in terms of that level of understanding of what it takes to change a school in terms of the daily practices, what teachers do, what uh, school leaders do, and so on. Um, so, I started by saying that I think a school level support system uh, that I personally am not unsympathetic to such an approach, and I don't think such an approach need be predominantly privatizing in its effect and in its practices. 
But I think this particular model is privatizing in its effect and its practices in the way it dislocates schools from the system um, and in the way it uh, privatizes the employment of teachers, in the way it restructures accountability. Um, so I think this model will set schools up for failure along with their partners. I think particularly the absence of a theory of change um, will we'll do that. It will leave these organizations which so far are not well placed to develop these strategies for change um, being accountable for developing them. So one might say then if I think if I'm saying that such an such a um, sort of intervention if it looked very different might be less problematic for me and if I'm saying that I don't see it as at the main criticism of it that it is in and of itself private in a simplistic sense, but I do see its logic as problematic uh, and having private-like qualities. If I'm saying all of that, is it possible to have a project that looks very different, that works at the level of the school, but does work um, with the system, does, is supported by a theory of change, um, does work with communities in a way that the literature suggests we should do and does distribute accountability across the different levels in an appropriate way so that you can deal with issues at the level at which they arise. Well, I have come across one such model, actually. There is one such project operating. Um, on the basis of the documents about this project, it does at least attempt to do all of those things. Um, so I'm quite happy to, to, you know, to tell you what it is, but it's not, it's not a project that I have been personally involved with, but I do think it at least illustrates that at the, at the level of modeling, it is possible to come at this very differently, to come at this in a way that is more public-like and to still provide support. Thank you.